But, um, well, thank you guys for coming. Um, welcome to our um, ARPA American Rescue Plan Act um, Community Outreach Informational Meeting. Um, we, uh, sorry, my name is Ramsey Papp. I'm uh, one of the committee members. Um, and do uh, you guys want to introduce yourselves sure. first? Be happy to. Hi, I'm Michael Body, and um, yeah, this committee's been together since mid-March, meeting at least monthly, and uh, we're at a point where we feel ready to roll out the intake, and uh, thanks for coming out. Yep, and I'm Mary Richter. Right now, I am the acting chair, working with the rest of the group, um, and then we have three other members that are not here. They'll be presenting on Thursday, uh, the same material over at the Red Schoolhouse over at uh, the VTC um, campus and again thank you for attending today's session or informational meeting so okay here we go let's talk a little bit about our um, project as you can see on the agenda we're going to talk a little bit about ARPA um, and the funding that um, is going to be distributed to the greater Randolph area which means basically Randolph Randolph Center East Randolph um, We'll talk about the scope of the ARPA committee, our timeline that we have set in process for um, taking the ideas and, and trying to implement them, um, our framework for making the most of this one t once in a lifetime kind of batch of money that our town is going to get to um, hopefully do some really impactful things with, um, um, use of existing tools, um, you know, we're going to talk about, let's not reinvent the wheel. If it worked somewhere else, maybe it could work for us. Um, how to stretch the ARPA dollars. Are there, are there other things that are uh, other pots of money that could use embellishing to make a project happen? Um, what ARPA means in Vermont. And um, our, our phase one, we're going to talk about that. And then phase two, and take any questions at the end. So. Um, if we can uh, do the presentation and save the questions for the end, that would be great. Um, well, let's get started. Yeah. Do you want me to? I could go ahead. Sure. So again, <laughs> I'm going to kind of read from the slide. So the, the American Rescue Plan uh, was established in 2021 due to COVID um, and to be able to provide money to governments, state and local, uh, throughout the nation to respond to um, the things that have been lost as well as, you know, some recovery from COVID uh, pandemic. Speaking, you know, regarding Randolph, there's been a lot um, being part of the Economic Council. We were in what we called uh, crisis mode, trying to get through that. And so now we are in recovery mode. And so we have been allocated the funds and now it will go through um, some stages again as we Ramsey stated this is the first one with take, first intake, and then we will have a second round where it will be more formalized. Um, and again, a lot of this information is available on the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Just um, real quick here, that the last line is important to note that um, the federal final rule did actually increase uh, the flexibility for um, how these funds can be used, which is, it sounds like that's counter how, how it usually works, usually final rule tightens, tightens up the um, ways you can use uh, federal funds. The other piece is in April, um, we recommended to the select board, there's a thing called the standard allowance. If, if you're getting less than 10 million, you can just take that and that saves um, a lot of paperwork, I believe. Um, yeah, that's so we recommended reporting. to the select board and then um, the select board approved as we're coming in at 1.37 million. Um, we are a smaller pool of money, so we could do that. So just to give an idea of the group, um, the so not the select board, but select, yes, the select board and the town uh, were tasked with developing a, a council, or not a council, but a committee. And so it is a seven member committee which consists of Trevor our town ma manager Perry Armstrong that is our uh, chair myself as acting chair um, Jeff Grout as our secretary Michael then we have Matt Ramsey and Maria 
who's present today. And it is our uh, task to collect everything and then um, at the end make recommendations. So that's the purpose of this committee is to, again, how is the money going to be best spent for Randolph and the Randolph, uh, the greater uh, Randolph area. So um, we, um, the committee was pulled together, our scope of work, there's the door, <laughs> um, Thanks, to review and discuss and understand all the ap applicable criteria or guidelines related to the use of ARPA funds. So um, we actually had a presentation from someone from the um, VLTC, uh, did I say that the right, the yep. Vermont League Sorry. of Cities and Towns um, came and, and talked to us about um, different ways that we could look at um, implement, implementing um, the guidelines and what some other towns had done. So that's where we talked about the taking the standard, um, what did you call it? The, the standard allowance. <laughs> the standard it allowance. It made a lot more sense um, for flexibility and for um, ease of reporting. Um, so we, um, hello, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we um, will are working with town staff to figure out how to engage the community and how to get the information out and, and spent some time working on a timeline and figuring out how we would do an intake, how we would solicit projects and, and how we would look at um, the criteria for implementing them. Um, so we you know, are reaching out to other um, local stakeholders and potential partners if we need to, that will be part of the process. Um, and um, the main goal is to develop a list of potential uses for the ARPA funds and identify which of those need additional development, research, and other work. So with our intake form, we'll get the information we need and see how, you know, shovel ready the projects might be. And in addition to that, we, um since we've posted this on uh, Front Porch Forum, I've gotten some inquiries regarding municipal uses for the money. And anything that is regarding the Randolph infrastructure will not fit into this project, really. Those quest types of questions need to be forwarded and, and passed on to Trevor, who manages the town. So the purpose of this committee is really set differently than dealing with the infrastructure. So we will leave that. Um, again, any references to infrastructure, such as the water system, maintenance of the roads, and things like that, will be then forwarded to Trevor, um, should it come through us or through the forms, and then Trevor will address those, and then we will address the other pieces of that. Right. Likewise, with the um, intake applications, if it looks like a really great idea, but maybe is better... Um, fits for a different um, pot of money that might be available. We see our job as helping people um, sort, sort that out as well. So again, um, go, it's just really um, what Ramsey and Mike have said, a lot of this is just information that can be found. I don't want to go you know, read what is on the bullets, because again, this information is available on the town website. We'll make sure that we will provide additional information so it's easy to find it on the town website. And then again, anybody who's interested and in possibly post the PowerPoint presentation so that um, it's easily accessible what is being addressed. Because we're just going to go through a really high level and try just to give uh, resources and the information. And then you can find it um, either on the town Facebook page and as well as the town website. Um, and it's just important to note too that um, the, the the community that we're talking about is the greater Randolph community with East East Randolph and Randolph Center included, and and so the money distributed, the projects need to keep in mind the the short and long term benefits for the, that entire area. Um, you know, we don't want something that's solely Randolph village focused we want to it, it could it that doesn't mean it can't be in one of the locations but we want to keep an eye on the broad the broad impact um correct so what we've done is just to be transparent to the community has created a project timeline so each stage has to do's tasks to be accomplished 
And again, this will be posted on the town website and other resources um, and social media. And I'm not going to go through everything, but this is very high level and, and the arrow is just indicating which stage of the project we're in. So we're right now at the uh, gather, um, sorry, doing the uh, informational meetings and then uh, having the intake forms completed and then that will then, that arrow at some point will start moving towards stage three and so forth. So this, um, my goal, I would hope, and I think the committee agrees, is to keep this on the town website so that everybody knows where we're at and ask questions as we move through the project. Do you have anything else you want to add? Nope, you, got, you covered it. <laughs> so really, um, this is a pulled off of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And just, again, they provided us when they visited the uh, committee of establishing and, and defining the framework for uh, doing the funds. And again, it's to prioritize, prioritize good governance, leveraging the ARPA aid, and then, you know, really get what's the best uh, bang for your buck, invest in the best uses for the long-term recovery. And again, I'm not going to go through each unless you want us to, but this is a high-level um, that you know is just being transparent you know gathering the information and really the key is community involvement because this is not just for a certain segment it's for all of us yep community involvement and um really transparency throughout is really important we want to have as much information we want to people to be able to access that um so we'll be putting things out on the website we are we are hosting these meetings we may have some more meetings coming forward to try to generate ideas uh, and or maybe around projects that come in that aren't fully fleshed out but seem really exciting for the community so right and also as you were mentioning we're keeping an eye on geography that there's a good spread yeah. um, also just demographics as well there may be an idea that really is like makes kids lives better or makes working parents lives better or makes the elderly lives better so we're also keeping an eye on breadth that way demographically as well. So when they talk about existing tools, really it's, you know, there, there are so many resources here in Randolph as well, um, is that, you know, instead of, you know, trying to figure out, well, what can the funds be used for? There are resources and I, I a couple I can hit upon and I'm going to ask the rest if I've missed any, but um, one of the things that we have is uh, the town plan and so out of the town plan there are action items and I'll use an example out of the town plan um, one of the goals set was to have a uh, an economic development director and that was accomplished and that was a task on the town plan and there are other pieces on the town plan and I believe that a lot of these uh, wish lists or things that we want to do as a town have come from a variety of people and a variety of committees and, and, and discussions. And I could see when I look at a town at the town plan, there are things that had come out of the um, the back in, when we had R3. You know, there are a lot of things that came out of there, you know, re-energized Randolph and that had for tourism, downtown, um, a whole bunch of items in which I was part of. And then there's also things that come out of the Economic Council and other committees, the, the, again, the um, Town Plan Committee. And so a lot of things are out there that can be looked at to say, okay, how do we, have we accomplished this? And if we haven't, is this something we want to accomplish with the funding? Does it apply with the ARPA funding? Can we use that ARPA funding? Is there other funds that could be complemented with that? So again, taking a look at what is existing, but also what is new. So it doesn't have to be one or the other, it could be a combination of items. <coughs> I don't know if you had additional, if I've missed anything on that or, no? Uh, well I just, yeah, and I just wanted to put in there, you know, we do get a lot of, in, at least early on, a lot of comments about, you know, the roads are horrible, fix the roads. But um, we, in one of our presentations, we talked about that, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but, um, 1.37 million dollars actually wouldn't do make a big dent <laughs> in, right, in right. fixing roads it's a it's a it sounds like a huge amount of money and people wouldn't think yeah fix all kinds of things with that but 
um, there's other funds that, that are specifically used for taking care of those things, and we would use the money up immediately if we, if, if, if we were even able to do something like that with roads. Uh, um, a small amount of road work costs a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, so we're really looking at projects that, that maybe can leverage other grants. There might be other grants out there that can, can help with a certain project. Um, but not that a project that's already covered by existing funds that, that are already in place to take care of those issues. Right. And, and if you think about 1.37 million, if that, I mean, and not that we would pick a number, but if that, that could be 137, $10,000 grants or, you know, so many 50,000 or, so we are thinking, the, the word breadth keeps coming up. Um, yeah, I don't think we, I think consensus is we don't want to dump it into three miles of road. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. These are just some resources that the Vermont League of City, Cities and Towns has provided. Um, and, you know, it gives, it helps just say, okay, what can I look at and how can I um, adjust my project? Does it fit into this? So, and this is not, this is not limited to this list. There's other um, areas that you can look, but this is at least some of the information that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has provided. So, some of the things that where you can stretch, as they say here, stretch your ARPA dollars is pretty, you know, I don't want to say simple, but it's just, here are some of the points, is that they do, it's funny, they reference know, they water and sewer, however, I've had a conversation with Trevor <laughs> and water and sewer is being handled by the town, so I'm going to kind of skip that. But things such as the broadband, um, having safe streets, the charging stations for EVs, um, items like, you know, things that need to be done maybe with some municipal buildings throughout town. Um, one the of town the things, website. <laughs> that's where I was just going to go. Thanks, Ramsey. So one of the things that the committee has already talked about and are considering is, and we pretty much put that as a project, is to update the town website. It's antiquated. It's not user friendly. And so there are already going to be funds that are going to be appropriated to updating the town website. Um, so that will be forthcoming. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything else to this particular slide, but this is pretty much in yeah. a nutshell. Um, and just in in our, in our initial meetings and getting together and information gathering, you know, we did go and look at a lot of other towns' websites and um, see what other people were doing with ARPA money um, projects. And we realized at that time that our website is very limited. There's been discussions in Randolph for uh, at least as long as I can remember, at least 10 or 15 years, about having... Um, a better town-wide website where, and a town calendar was the other thing that a lot of people and a lot of organizations have talked about or trying to communicate. So um, a town website and then some security. Um, there might be some things like digitizing um, land records and um, things like that that are really important for, for access these days going forward um, that is something that also um, probably will be looked at as well. Yeah, and I think COVID had opened our eyes to, you know, what can be more accessible, especially yeah. when you, you can't come into a building and access it. So um, this is now the opportunity to digitize what records and, and so forth, as Ramsey had said, um, to make life a lot easier for folks just to access the website. So, um, Right. Um, yeah. And in terms of the evaluation criteria, and it, it's also on the intake, is um, connection to intent of the ARPA funding, which is really imagining, okay, if uh, the world shut down again because of another pandemic or another disaster, um, how would Randolph be better positioned to function? So something like accessing um, land records online would, would fit. So um, as you think about your projects, think about, hmm, how would, how would what I'm imagining um, make Randolph a more self-sufficient place if uh, the world shut down again? Good point. And again, this is just continuation of um, ideas. You know, I know there have been talk about you know bike paths and 
you know, safety and things like that for pedestrians. Uh, we already talked about broadband, but also some support for local nonprofits. And again, this is another um, slide from the Vermont League of, League of Cities and Towns that can be accessed, but, uh, you know, affordable child care. Um, and that seems to be the driving force here in Randolph for a very long time. Um, and one thing that I know companies uh, here in town is the driving force is bringing people to Randolph and being able to have affordable child care so that they could go to work. And if that piece is missing, then they don't come. So that seems to be one of the, the big things along with other I don't want to go down that path, but there's housing and a whole bunch of other things. But yeah. child care seems to be one of the biggies that um, come up all the time. So it's something, you know, we need to address. So um, it's pretty, again, just, you know, this is our first phase of uh, getting the initial intake um, form. This is pretty much a, a, a snapshot of what's on the the website so I'm going to read it because I can't remember <laughs> so so we've received 1.37 million uh, from ARBA to strengthen the re resilience of our community so now we've got to decide how we're going to spend the money so by December 31st of 2024 um, I'm sorry identify how to spend the money by 24 and then allocate the funds by I think that they all need to be done, um, allocated and used by yeah, the right. uh, end of 26, 2026. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a pretty big window of opportunity, yeah. but it will go fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so what we've done is uh, we're having a two stage process. This is the one of the two uh, to look at the, the different projects that are going to, you know, be considered. And then um, it will be up to us to review. We'll have a set criteria. Uh, and a matrix to score and then you know what what is best for the community again not just Randolph Village but the greater Randolph area that is encompasses that area and so um, what we will do is start the intake process which is going right now we got some paper copy here but also will be available on uh, the town website um, Facebook page uh, front porch forum and then there will be hard copy um, applications in the front lobby of the town hall here. And so we're, the window is going to be um, starting now until the end of the year to complete and submit. And it will be best to submit it online because the way it will get tallied. We'll get the responses and it gets tallied and um, it will keep it uh, straightforward so that we could just pull that information electronically and then start our review. And, and what we're going to end up doing is not wait until the end of the year to start, um, to start reviewing. We'll probably start reviewing as soon as applications come in. But again, the window is going to be starting today through December 31st of 22. And just to be clear, we probably will consider, depending on what, our, what applications we get, we'll probably consider um, having some funds, saving some funds potentially for later ideas or developing ideas. We aren't necessarily saying nobody can tell us any ideas after the end right. of December. We just want to get started and have some concrete ideas to work with so that we make sure we know that uh, 2024 can sound like a long ways away, but it's really not. It's right around the corner. So. Um, we want to get this process going, um, but it doesn't mean that that necessarily we won't hear any ideas after after the end of December this year. Yep. So, so again, and then, but then that we'll end up opening another window. Yep. After our review, we'll open up another window um, to put in the final projects. And the way I I and I think the committee we all look at it as it's going to be more formalized, similar to like a grant process. So um, again, that, the details of that will be announced um, for phase two in the first quarter of next year. Right, and just backing up to phase one, um, the intake form is built around the evaluation criteria we came up with um, so that it's well aligned and transparent. Um, there's a consideration of costs, and we're not asking people to pull like a, 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 you know, $35,380. We're not asking people to pull that, but we have bins under $10,000, 10 to 50000 
fifty to a hundred thousand, hundred to three hundred thousand, and then over three hundred thousand. Those will be the bins. Um, the next evaluation criteria is connection to the intent of the funding. We spoke of that a bit earlier um, about re resilience and self sufficiency. Um, community benefit, that's really the breadth piece, geographic reach, demographic reach, number of people who would, who would actually benefit from your project idea. Um, viability is also key. Um, can you share rele uh, relevant expertise? Is there already a, a sort of, uh, you know, you've got a file with planning you've done for a while. Um, and then just the availability of other resources that may be able to connect. Um, and then economic growth, just how does it um, help um, Randolph grow as a town? Um, so those, those are the, the five biggies. That's our evaluation criteria. And you'll see on the intake form, uh, those are exactly what you're being asked um, to produce. And then, yeah, in phase two, after we sort, um, the uh, qualifying projects will have the opportunity to fill out a much more detailed that's where we may want to see the line item spreadsheet and an actual nailed down number. Um. Yeah, and in this day and age, with if, if it involves construction and things like that, we probably need to right, see, 20, see that it's viable yeah. to make sure it can get done by 2026. But that gives us, making decisions soon gives us um, a lot of time to make sure projects and money, the money can get spent. So again, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we're in phase one, and then uh, there will be more um, announcements in the first quarter of 23 for phase two that is going to be a little bit more detailed. So we are going to open the floor to questions if anybody has any. I have a bunch. Okay. I didn't yeah. so. <laughs> okay. um, so uh, just for clarity, the, the 1.37 mil, um, is yeah. that going to be expended entirely on community initiated projects or is it possible that the select board may decide, eh, we want to carve out half a mil for X? You know, we, let, let's just say pothole. Or the town website. In other words, is the cost of the new town website coming out of the 1.37 mil? We actually talked about this and the, if the town wants to do something, it is, it's an applicant as well as anyone else, so they can't sort of cream off the top okay. and say, yeah, we're grabbing 500 thou, and then you guys can play with the rest. No, they would be an applicant as well. And that means that, uh, that's But nice the answer question. to the question about the website is yes, that money, that is something that we have talked about, like the website, that kind of thing, would be would part of that website. money, okay. yes. And, and so, as I understand it then, the Randolph Arbor Committee, you folks, will make the decision about who makes the final cut. Uh, that is to say, it, it will be the committee that decides if the town gets X for a new website. Um, just as you would decide if Project Y community <coughs> initiated goes on to the, to the second round. Is that correct? I believe that we have to make a recommendation of the project. The final to decision, the the final decision right. is okay. the selection. But I, I dare say it's, it's likely that the select board is going to follow the recommendations of the uh, ARPA committee. We hope, certainly hope so. We hope so. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, and, and just for a little bit of um, background to when we first started the discussions about this, um, it was, it, there was a little bit of a more narrow parameters, I think, where, um, for where the money could be spent. And so that was where our, our, our discussion started about you know, one of the things that had been mentioned by a lot were if there was needed um, needed updates to municipalities and, and land records was a really big thing for a lot of towns because during COVID, it was so hard to um, to access things for, for certain people or, you know, maybe there, you know, maybe in Irene, certain places with flooding and, and problems like that lost records because they weren't protected properly. So, so modernizing and digitizing and doing a lot of things like that was a was a big suggestion that a lot of um, other um, towns, municipalities had looked into for that. So that was a recommendation that really made a lot of sense to the committee when we started talking about that. Um, so that that's just a little bit of background. But then um, the in the final ruling, things opened up a little bit. So it's a little bit more flexible now for what the projects can be as long as they consider the greater community and um, go towards building a resilient community 
Um, but really looking at the effects of, co you know, this money is, came about because of COVID and because of the, the huge detriment that COVID was to communities, um, the ability for communities to come together, to meet in person and to, to do things efficiently. Um, so that's where a lot of that came from. And that's, that's still a focus that it needs to, to look at, but it's a little bit more flexible than it was originally. Yep. Next question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, award decisions need to be made by December 31st, 2024. Does that mean that they will not be made until then, or will award decisions be made uh, possibly sooner than that? Is there any hard or even soft uh, date for when decisions would be made? I believe that we talked about um, sort of having a rolling, yeah. rolling decision making um, based on you know our initial, based on the initial batch of projects that we get um, looked at. Um, I think that we talked about, you know, if you came to us with a really um, concrete proposal that we all agreed was met all the criteria and um, then we submit, we put it out to different people to say, okay, here's submit us your like final grant, more like a real grant proposal with the details and things that are, really um, well thought out and put together and ready to go, our, our, we, our hope is that we will be able to have them funded not waiting for a whole year, you yeah, know, like soon as, as, as soon as possible. Yeah, and the, the, and the key too is But that not necessarily all of the money allocated at once. That's what I was saying before. Yeah. Like, um, it, we don't have to spend it all by, you know, we don't have to spend it all immediately, but if there's projects that are ready, we are hoping to be able to approve them. Yeah, and then the thing too is to, it, it gets escalated up to the select board to make right. the final decision. So right. we as a committee will say, okay, we're done. And I agree, I think keeping it as a rolling you know, review process and then bringing it to select board, that then it would be put onto the select board schedule agenda for review and discussion and yeah. approval and whatnot. Um, I can, I, yeah, I could see it as rolling, not just all yeah. everything all at once and then being allocated all at once. Yeah. I think it's it's all. Go ahead. Also, um, the the phase one, the intake um, information we get will be able to help us sort out just how long phase two right. will take because if we've got you know a million dollars worth of projects for $1.37 million, that becomes a very easy and very quick kind of, um, or if we've got seven million worth of ideas on 1.37, just playing with right. numbers, that is going to make for a slower P2 process. So a lot of this intake process is to be able to say, okay, I mean, right now we hope to by, uh, I think we, we, by the end of the first quarter of 2023, we hope to be sorted through um, the intakes as they shut down at the end of this year, we figure a quarter to really digest what, what people are saying and, and tally up numbers um, and ideas. Um, so, so just sort of thinking through that timeline, that would mean that uh, final applications of those proposals that make the, make the cut, shall we say, um, those then couldn't be due sooner than in the second quarter of 20, 2023, I would assume. Does that's, that make sense? That's, yeah. That, that's so mid 2023, which means the soonest, I presume the soonest that an award could be made would be, say, third quarter of 2023. Is that, does that sound right? Third, I was, yeah, I was thinking yeah, the third or yeah. fourth quarter I mean, of 2023. Okay, I'm asking, of course, because I'm thinking of a project that's very time set, has a lot of time uh, sensitive yeah. elements. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also elements where what the proposal is requesting it may depend on when yeah. funds are available because sure. there's a huge mix of, of, uh, of funding sources yeah. that have to be juggled. And yeah. I think too, like, like Michael said, like if we get, we don't have any idea really. I mean, you've been our faithful, our faithful attendee at our <laughs> meetings. And yep. um, so other than that, I don't know that we have a really great idea yet about the, um, how many other Demand, project yeah. ideas, ideas there might be. So, you know, we might get to the end of December and find that we have three really good projects that people have proposed to us. That would make our decision-making process a lot easier. Um, so that might mean that then um, we could 
make a, a funding decision a lot quicker, depending on you know the number of sure. projects that we have to sift through. I think so. I I think um, until the end of December, we really don't have a great idea at the moment of <laughs> of, of what to expect. Yeah. Um, but at the end of December, we should be able to say we have this many projects in the works that we're looking at and have a better idea of what our time frame of making a decision could be. Yeah, and we, we've we been thinking in terms of, okay, we have till December 20, uh, 2024, end of, um, to allocate these funds. So let's make sure we come in well before then. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we even were like, are we ready to have this meeting? <laughs> yeah. Should we push it back a week or two so we're really ready? And I was like, no, we got we to gotta get the ball rolling here. Yeah. So um, we're feeling good about um, having the intake applications open until the end of this year and then being able to really figure out, okay, maybe can we figure this whole thing out in 2023? Do we spill into 2024? How much into 2024? But um, we are, yeah, that drop dead deadline of, of, of last day of 2024 feels like we'll, we'll, we'll hit that line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another question, did you have anything? Oh, I'm listening for a minute. Okay. <laughs> I got some um, questions. <laughs> So, uh, as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm representing a project uh, that's quite large, um, the child care center that we're hoping to uh, to build uh, uh, up there uh, uh, at the Enterprise Center of VTC. Um, and we're running with the state, with uh, foundation funding sources, the state, uh, uh, congressional delegation, and so forth. The fact that the magnitude of this project um, is so large with so many funding sources, I would presume it's not going to count against the project in terms of the, the Randolph ARPA funds. No, I, I, I think it's, that's actually like a fantastic point that it's the kind of project where, um, where we had said before, you know, if there's a project that needs a, a piece and there's a lot of other support mm -hmm. for it, um, that, that speaks well to it, actually, I think, because um, we want to make sure that, um, that the projects that get proposed are actually possible. That's part of our scope of looking at them and saying, you know, is this the, what the intake form is going to hopefully tell us is, are these different projects possible? So I think it actually... They'll, they'll work right in, in tandem together it's, it's some, something like that really meets the bang for the buck criteria yeah, yeah, we've, yeah. we've yeah. got in in terms of like wow you've already lined up matching funds because we see part of our job is to like figure out what other sources are out there and, and give people that information but if a project's already done that kind of legwork that's just um, I would one, say one it, wrinkle may be that what we ask Randolph ARPA for Maybe somewhat imprecise. I, I guess I take it by early 23, we'll have a clear idea of what funding is in place, what we need more funding for. Yeah. But you know, I it could it could be uh, I don't know. Um, it might be for I don't know, landscaping at the at the center, or it could be piece for of furniture for the yeah. center. Yeah. 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 It, so it the, be, depending on when, you know, on the yeah, and I think so that the idea of this of the intake form is to have that broad picture, um, maybe some specifics too, but you don't, you don't have to go into you don't have to know those specific details mm -hmm. for the intake form if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I, yeah, I, think I feel that's, like that's sort of what you're asking. So yeah, in I the second is, phase, um, like Mary said, it would be more like a like a grant request where mm -hmm. you'd have the specifics. That and you, and you regarding, I, I know that the daycare center has been going, working on this for a very long time. Yes. I think you're going on to three years already. Four years. Four years. So, um, so you have done a lot of this legwork. So the information that we're gonna need for the second part, you probably already have that information. Again, it's just what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that specific dollar amount. And where is that specific dollar amount going to go mm -hmm. regarding the daycare project? Yeah. Am I understanding? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll have a clear, I, as I say, by, by early 2023, we'll have, I hope we'll have a clear picture of what we need, when we need it, and so forth, you know. Yes. It's just, it's a little fuzzy right at the moment, but. Um, and plus you had a lot of, you've got a lot of moving pieces on it. And yeah, I, it, I've been fortunate I think fortunate, I, but I've been involved in listening to updates from Damien mm -hmm. uh, of yeah. what has happened and what's going on and, and the needs and just 
some of the bottleneck and it just the different, again, you've got a lot of moving pieces that right. you've got to manage. So yeah. Um, right. But the, the, the Randolph ARPA funding would be, would be a crucial piece of that. If it Correct. Comes, yeah. Eric, do you mind if I ask you a question? Sure. Um, so we, uh, I was on the kind of the intake committee um, designing this form. And we really try to figure out the, the the bins. We didn't. We should people come up with a specific number. Uh, we went with this bins idea: the under ten, the ten to fifty, fifty to a hundred, hundred to. Does that is that seem sensible and helpful the, to have those five bins under cost, just kind of as a as a oh. place as to where do I land my you know scale and scope. Um, it's, it, we thought asking for specifics at this point made, made little sense, but just wondering if those, were, those bins were helpful. Um, well, uh, I, think, I think we actually have a, a fair idea of what, what our ask is going to be. Uh, I'm not sure how, if that applies to other, uh, other proposers, uh, but, but, you know, sure. I, mean, the, I know which box we're probably, we're planning to Right, check. right. Okay. But you feel like you could be even more specific than these bins at this point. Um, yeah, we, we certainly could could be. I mean, <laughs> you know, we'd love to we love to we love to ask for over you know the over three hundred thousand category. But I mean, I think you know we're, we we have some specific need and amount in mind that fits within one of these bins. So I think I think they're fine. I I, I don't know what other applicants are likely to uh, decide about mm. what their ask is going to be. Yeah, that's, and that's I, I think get in general people will figure well shoot for the moon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But I guess you'll see. Well, three, 300 times five gets us over, right? <laughs> I think that does it for my questions at the moment, anyway. Okay. Cool. Yeah, anything else? <laughs> no, these guys are in, meeting, involved sorry, in our yeah. committee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeff. Oh, yeah. we are I'm glad you're on time. We are filming, Jeff. <laughs> Watch around. Stop and see how it went. Joe, did you have a question? Yeah. Wait, how'd you know my name? Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, it's my name. It's like, yeah. That's strange. Uh, all right. Uh, I wanted, you said that it includes um, all the towns, and I just wanted to make sure I got them all. It's East Randolph, Randolph Center, and Randolph Village. Does it include anyone else? No. No. Um, that's it. Brookfield and Braintree have their own um, funding. Yeah. Cool, cool. I just wanted to Isn't make sure. Is there a North Randolph? Did you say that? Everybody, yeah, anything, anything, that's North, anything that's considered Randolph. Randolph. Right. Yeah, Randolph okay. Center, we, we could say too. West Randolph too, but yeah. let's just. Yeah. That's us. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we are West Randolph. Right? Yeah. All right, North Randolph, thank you. So, yeah, I want to make sure. I'm not familiar with some of the other parts as much, so. School Street's very well represented in this Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, and I was wondering, uh, do you have money coming from the Infrastructure Act as well? Uh, that you're aware of, or is that something that you're still mulling over? The infrastructure. Act. Yeah, I'm well, that would be a town question. That's yeah. a town um, question. Um, we are just ARPA. You're just dealing with the ARPA. So uh, any, any other um, funding sources would need to be yeah, asked right. of the town manager. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Tre Trevor would know. If, I don't know if infrastructure funding is just going to state and the state divvies out, or I if it's so. yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So you'll have to pitch it to the state. Cool, cool. It's all. It's outside our realm of. That's okay. No, I wanted yeah. to know because you know. But potentially, we may point point some on the intake to like. Actually, that looks like a really good. Mm -hmm. Go for that. Yeah. Bin well, money. I was thinking if somebody pitched a project that really met some of that criteria, what you might do then is start it and with a bit of money, and then push it along to a much larger funding source. But yeah. Yeah, that's just that's curious. And our, and our um our town manager is involved in our meetings. So when we have questions like that come up, you know, so if people have proposals, mm -hmm. w when we're going through it, he'll be able to say, you know, there's this other money that this yeah. looks like it would fit better. So that's part of the that's part of the criteria that we'll be going through when we look at the proposals to see them and and filter them out and say if there's um, funding from another source, because we don't want to duplicate funding sources, but yeah. we might want to add to funding, like if there's a, something that's limited right. um, and then ARPA funds could complement it, then we want to look at that. Um, so we either want to redirect or have them work together or have them be solely, fun, you know, if it has to be something that's solely funded through ARPA, then we'll, we'll be considering those options. Gotcha. Uh, now, I just wanted to know one more thing about the structure of how these proposals are going through. You mentioned the select board. I actually don't know if, like how many steps they're going through. Right now, obviously, you're just going through initial applications, but then 
Could you walk me through some of that? Well, I think this. Well, this is what I think, and you guys. Yeah, can I mean, if you're still working on it, that's fine. And, and again, curious. this will be yeah. discussed in upcoming meetings. Yeah. So, it, you know, we got through this first yeah. piece, and now we've got to build out. What but I, I that think how we envision be. it is that mm -hmm. um, the first step, this first step, is our um, giving the information out there, and then yep. gathering information from projects, gotcha. um, gathering that information, and then the committee will review projects. And um, like I said, differentiate whether there's other funding sources for those projects and how, how viable they are. Um, and then we will reach out to people with the projects that um, we think are viable, I believe, and, mm -hmm. and have a, a more in-depth grant type application be filled out so that we can really evaluate the, the viability of the projects. And then I think um, at that point we will also have some form of a scoring matrix right. and hitting the points yeah, we that we haven't developed that. Yeah, no, that's all right. Yet, yeah, yeah we're, we're still working on that. I'm part. totally <laughs> just asking because you yeah. know, if I question. have something pitched, I'd like yeah. to you know what kind yep. of steps yep. do I have to yeah. think about? We just stopped in to make sure everything's <laughs> good. I just opened for a donut hole. Yeah, right no, 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 no. We already ate. <laughs> so um, <laughs> everything's good. I think that that is where we where we're going with that. So mm -hmm. um, we still have to develop our final processes, mm -hmm. but um, we'll, you know we'll, we'll get the broad ideas, find out how many projects we're even thinking about, so that we can so we can see if we are you know over, <laughs> overwhelmed with them right. or if we have a couple really well thought out projects that we can then you know that will make it an easier decision if there's yeah. uh, like Michael said if we've got um, you know six three hundred thousand uh, dollar proposals then yeah. we have a lot more decision making to make if we have um, you know four fifty thousand dollar proposals it's a lot easier so we'll, we just have to we're not quite sure it's okay yet. no it's all right <laughs> and, and like they said you know both uh mike and ramsey said you know what are the quick hits what are, what are the short-term goals is that something that could be turned around quickly and then you're going to have a longer term goal so um again with the goal here was to inform the community get the intake going because as we all said 2024 is sooner than later. It comes real quick, especially when you're on a project. And the other thing was, if we waited any longer to get out to the community, you're now running into the holiday season. And, and we all know how the holiday season is. So um, I think we have done pretty well being prepared for this round, and we know what we've got to do. We know what our to-dos are um, so that you know we are um, making sure we look at everything and it's transparent, it's fair, and then again, develop our scoring process so that, and reach out to the folks and keep going. So I, I envision that we'll probably have another meeting, another informational meeting as we move along with the project. This is just our very first step. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, um, it's been interesting, it's, it's been fun, but you know, there's a lot of pieces to it and, and also being compliant with the, you know, the feds, so. Yeah, how much know. stakeholder involvement do you have to have? Just, do you have to have it advertised and then, you know, whatever you get is what you get, or? Say that again, I'm sorry? Uh, your stakeholder involvement, so us. Uh, how much do you just have to advertise and then just hope people show up? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any specific requirement. No. Um, um, you know, I, 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 don't, I think that a lot of different towns were able to kind of come up with a process that they won't, you know whatever they thought worked for them so this is what our our committee came together and decided that this was the process we wanted to go to for reaching out to um the community to try to get ideas i don't think that that was really set in stone the different right. community the, the committees were sort of able to make those decisions on how how do you want to go about trying to figure out the best way to Spend, it's, it's just really important. Um, we felt as a committee um, that it's really important to, if we are to be representing the community and working on what's best for the resilience of the community, that we get as much community input as possible. So and right. and FaceTime and and again, I you know, as the others, I I looked at other websites, you know, to or other jurisdictions within the state and outside and within New England, and there are some with. Um, 
towns that didn't even do an outreach with the community. Yeah. They did a survey and they've done everything just totally online. Um, some, there was one that I read where they had already allocated a huge portion of the funds and then the remaining funds they reached out to the community using a survey. So again, there's no yeah. structure there's set. There's some roominess there. there was, yeah. you know, so it depends on the town too because there's some, there's a lot of towns in Vermont that don't, I think there's one town that ended up um, wanting to do their project on um, the water quality or a water, a water treatment system, something like that because they didn't have that and that was proving to be a really um, difficult problem for them. The town decided, I mean, they worked together with the committees and everything, but that was a very big, impactful yeah. project for that area. And so most of their money, I think, was going into that. It was a um, single, long-standing. Which totally makes sense for, certain, for, that, for yeah. certain places. There might be a big project that makes sense like that. But um, we felt that it was important to reach out to the community for ideas. Um, you know, we had a few ideas that we thought were important, like the, the town records and the town website and some little things that. Right. Yeah. We also talked about, you know, not everyone's online, so there are paper intakes, and you yeah. do see posters actually at physical locations throughout the town because, um, uh, yeah, there's yeah. still a digital divide. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I did like your broadband mention. I think that probably would be well yeah well used yeah yeah and related to intent of funding right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool cool all right well those are my quick questions i guess <laughs> and feel free to reach out um you know i, I think we're listed um on the on the on um, the website on the website yep. we there should be a contact so feel free to ask it send any other questions and we we oh. meet frequently so we can address those. Uh, there's a question. Will uh, will the uh, ARPA committee continue to meet publicly? Uh, so I'll have something to do on my first day. <laughs> yes, we will. Good. Yes. <laughs> That's an easy one. <laughs> and you're more than welcome. You know that. <laughs> we enjoy having you, uh, to, you know, join us. But yes, most definitely we will continue. And so our next meeting is that first Thursday in November. I can't remember the day. Seventh? I think it's the. No, it's not the seventh. I think it's the ninth. No, ninth is a Wednesday. Hell, it's Monday. my husband's birthday. <laughs> Is that election day? Is the eighth? Eighth is a election. Oh, no, that's a Tuesday. So, so the eight, nine, ten. No, so then it's the week before because it's the first Thursday. Oh yeah, because Halloween is the is the is a Monday. So yeah, it'll be. We're falling on the third. It looks like the third. Okay, yep. that sounds about right. So yes, so now that we figured it out, so the next um, open time. meeting is going to be on November third. And it will be warned. It will be also on Front Porch Forum and other locations and posted around. Um, the and there's contest. another informational meeting on um, Thursday night at 7 o'clock mm -hmm. at the Red School House up in Randolph Center. So, you know, if you generate any more questions between now and then and you want to go listen to this presentation again, um, <laughs> you can go up there and ask questions. <laughs> Usually my daughter's asleep. So it's like, this is probably the best fit. And just again, the window for getting your intake in is between now and the last day of the year, December 31st, 2022. Mm -hmm. yep. gotcha. However, if on New Year's Day you have a fabulous <laughs> idea um, that is well supported, <laughs> we might consider it. <laughs> It's not. It's it. It's a window. It's yeah, it's not a. a it, it's you got to have a drop date. You know, drop dead date. Um, just so that you could get the stuff in. But there's always a little flexibility afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say into March, but you know, <laughs> yeah. we really want to get it within this window so that we could get to work on what we need to do next. And if a few trickle in, so be it. That's not you know, it's not a big deal. And if if. In the unlikely event that you don't have many submissions by December 31st, is it likely that you would then extend the extend the deadline in hopes of uh, uh, drawing drawing more applications? Yeah, we've I, talked about that. that I mean, it's, it's I think tricky like, around the holidays. Yeah, we we've talked about various different things, and I think it would make sense too for us to consider that if we had some really well thought out projects that were, you know, depending on the on the amount of money um, that we could approve a first round and then do it again another you know another time right and we you know we don't know if we're going to get overwhelmed with applications or it's right. really quiet but maybe on december 1st we can say oh it's 
really quiet. Yeah. And we do um, formally push back. Um, but right now we've got the, the December 31st. On down. We, we did. We went back and forth a lot about, like, is that a fair window? <laughs> yeah, and, and it's still open. I, I, it, we left it open for discussion because I think at one point in one of our meetings we even said, um, considering, you know, how much comes in, do we extend it to the middle of January? So, again, when we meet, we'll, right. we'll figure that out. Yep. And, and we want to balance it, too, for, you know, exactly for the concerns that you have of a project that, has been underway and really needs might need funding um, really quickly so um, we don't want to be completely yeah. um, locked into saying we can't make a decision right. to fund you we'll until the door open. you know the third quarter we want to we want to be flexible depending on on what we see come sure. in in sure. December that's great We'll, we'll hopefully know a lot more by the end of December of, of a lot more clarity on, on what the next steps look like. Yeah. So, whoops. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you very much that for showing helpful. up. Thank you for the good questions. Yeah. yeah. Those were great yeah. questions. Most so. definitely. Good. Well, thanks for, thanks for doing this. Sure thing. Thank I'm you. just curious. Need a clarification on lots of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you, we have a couple hard copies here. If you want to take one, um, it, okay. it. it